Look at who these people were. The high priest, the chief priests, they're going unto Caiaphas. These are like the rulers of the people that are conspiring together to do evil against Jesus Christ. Oh, why don't we just listen to the official story that they tell us of what's going to happen to Jesus Christ or, you know, of, of his fair trial. Right? If it, were, if it were today, they probably would have tried to suicide Jesus like they did with Epstein. Right. <laughs> By the way, Jeffrey Epstein didn't kill himself. <laughs> he didn't hang himself. <laughs> I, have to, I had to figure out a way to fit that into a sermon somewhere. But um, I mean, you see it on Facebook enough, right? So I had to, I had to, I had to work that in. But serious, in all seriousness, though, they would have probably tried to do that today. People in power try to get rid of Jesus Christ. He was causing too much of a stir. There, there's, there's too much of a problem with him being alive. They had to silence him. They had to try to kill him. Obviously, unwittingly, they didn't know that it was still all part of God's plan for him to be the sacrifice made for our sins, that through his death so much good could come and our salvation could come, and that that's even why they were allowed to do the things that they did, right? But they had no idea about that. They just wanted to kill him. They hated him. They wanted him gone. And they conspired, and they met secretly, and they, and they devised a plan to kill him. It says in verse number five, but they said, not on the feast day, lest there be an uproar among the people. So they were still strategically planning politically how they can do this because they, they wanted to do it as quietly as possible, right? They want to do it when everyone's distracted with something else and they're back to work and they're not celebrating a holiday and everyone's just like, whoa, hey, what's going on here? They want to do it on the feast day. They want to cause a big uproar. They want to try to do it. Uh, as, as quietly as possible. It says in verse number six, now when Jesus was in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, there came unto him a woman having an alabaster box of very precious ointment. Now, we're going to get back to, obviously, those wicked people, but right now we're getting, uh, we're getting caught up to where Jesus is. He's in Bethany and he's in the house of Simon the leper and it says here, there came unto him a woman having an alabaster box a very precious ointment and poured it on his head as he sat at meat. But when his disciples saw it, they had indignation saying to what purpose is this waste? Now we're going to go and look in a minute at John chapter 12. We're going to see some more information. And this story is recorded in the gospels and other gospels. And there's different bits of information that were given, but the most, um, the most new information we receive is in John. So if you want to kind of get ready, we're going to go there in a minute, but I want to finish reading a little bit more here about what happens here. So this woman, this nameless woman in this account, open an alabaster box, just a real precious box. She opens it up to, it with, it was filled with real precious, pricey, precious, right? Ointment, real expensive ointment. And pours it out on his head and just, you know, like doesn't spare, doesn't, you know, just, just pours it all out. And uh, as he's at meat and his disciples see it, it says they had indignation saying to what purpose is this? Well, what a big waste. I can't believe you just poured out all that really expensive ointment on Jesus's head. What were you thinking? What, what a big waste. And here's what they say for this ointment might've been sold for much and given to the poor. Now, Selling something that's expensive and giving to the poor, is that a good thing to do? Sure, right? Is there anything wrong with that? No, of course not. That's a good thing to do. If you choose to take some goods that you have and, and bestow a blessing on someone else and help other people out, that's great. There's nothing wrong with that. But he, you know what? There becomes a problem, and Jesus rebukes them for this too. Don't you just hate the super religious people that just look at everything that everyone else does? Well, you know, you could have just sold that for the, to the poor, you know, given that to the poor. Well, why didn't you do this and give that to the poor? And it's like, you know, usually these people aren't looking at themselves first anyways. Because if you wanted to micromanage everybody and just, and just examine how everybody spends their money, you know, you can say, well, why do you have this? Why do you have that? Well, why do you have heat in your house? Why do you have air conditioning? Huh? You don't need air. Well, you could have just saved that money and given that to the poor, right? There's always going to be things that you can find to say to somebody, you know, why didn't you give that to the poor? Why didn't you do something better with your money? 